I know that it's late. It has been almost 10 hours. It's the second day that we had a marathon of a day. Um, but we're done, almost done. I would like to ask Adam Posen, the president of the Peterson Institute for International Economics, who has played a major role in putting this conference together from the very beginning, to provide some brief closing remarks. And we are done, I promise you. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure you're thrilled now. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing I've changed my name to Vangelos Kyriakidis, <laughs> because that'll make me more popular with this crowd. Um, in, in the interest of all of us getting out of here, and, and including my own interest in making my flight, so my incentives are aligned, um, <laughs> that's something economists worry about. Let, let, me, let me try to give you what I think are 12 points as we move forward. Um, just to restate two things. First, Stelios and someone who's not here due to health problems, Danny Blanchflower, did yeoman work in creating this conference. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to partner with them and the foundation. And, and I, I just want to pick up on what the gentleman from the, the academy in, in Athens just mentioned, which is this was an extraordinary effort to bring together such a diverse set of competencies. And that was intentional. And because the intent is that you're all going to keep a stake in this, and you're going to help us help the foundation to do things that are actually going to matter. But in order to do that, I'm going to say some things that are probably going to annoy a few of the people who were guests on the program. Um, so let, let, me, let me go forward. First point, which I think leaps out, is that there is no substitute for getting young people experience. We've, we've got to stop thinking about it in terms of income. We've got to stop thinking about it in terms of their long-term futures. We've got to stop thinking about all these, you know, getting them the right job. It is, as was said repeatedly throughout these days from people working on the front line as well as the econometric studies, what matters is getting young people the opportunity to know how to behave in a work environment, to get something under their belt, to get it so it doesn't look like they've been out of work forever, to get them thinking in work terms. And I think that we need to centralize our efforts on that goal. That, that that has to be the, the first step and don't get too caught up in many other things. There are other things we may like, but ultimately that's the goal and we've seen both the statistical evidence and the personal evidence that once people are in the workforce, they don't tend to drop out. Second, I, I want to pick up on something my friend Jonathan Portis said in the opening panel this morning. It is wonderful to talk about innovation. It is wonderful to talk about the technology clusters in, in Israel and, and potentially in Greece and in the US and all these things. But in the end, it is normal small and medium business that is the core of employment in every capitalist society. And we have to, we have to focus on that. And not only that, is, it is, the, it is in a process innovation that comes out of these businesses and, and product innovation as much as the great technological leaps forward that matter. In the end, if Greece happens to have a brilliant professor at a university or not, Greece does have access to copying and developing all the cutting edge technologies. But what it doesn't have at the moment is this process by which small businesses become medium, medium businesses become large. And that's where the core of the issue has to be. Third, this is where I start to really annoy people. Um, we've been very careful today, I think rightly, not just out of courtesy, not to be criticizing Greek government policies, not this specific government, all the accumulated policies. Um, this is because this is about what the foundation can do and this is about what civil society can do in partnership with government. But in the end, there are a few things that are going to have to be confronted. There are some issues, particularly in labor law, and in registration, doing business, opening new companies that have to be confronted. 
And unfortunately, we can't get around that. No matter how much we want to do as much demonstration on ourselves, there is a limited focus set of things that in Greece that do have to change. And that we need to emphasize are not just about the EC coming in and, or Americans lecturing. It's about employment and opportunities in Greece. Fourth point coming out of that. So with this means we need to take, as my colleague Jacob Kierkegaard tried to point out yesterday and everybody has tried to point out, we, we don't want to fixate on the past, but we need to recognize that a lot of the youth unemployment problem in Greece was already there before the crisis. And, and so it's worse now, it's a human tragedy now, but we need to see what were the common themes and we know what many of them are. So fifth, this means we need to not only face up to the government, we need to face up to insiders. And this has been an eternal problem, and my friend Hunter A.S. says many of you, probably everyone in this room knows, has been he and his family and this foundation have been turning on their roots in a sense of not playing the insider's game in a way that many other wealthy people in Greece do not. Um, this isn't about scandal, this isn't about muckraking, but this is about making there to be room that new businesses and new opportunities can develop. And again, that's not as much about innovation as it is about, about reform. Sixth point. One thing which we heard repeatedly from the practitioners today, particularly in the morning sessions, which I thought were very impressive, was the, the issue of needing to be local of needing to recognize what are the strengths and attributes of a local community. And we heard that throughout this tourism discussion and the Israel example and on. And, and that most of these successful programs are very tailored to local environments. Which leads to the seventh point. Think about the possibility of convincing the Greek government or the people in this room who work with the Greek government, for the Greek government, creating demonstration zones where rules are temporarily suspended or loosened. We did that in Harlem, in this city, in the US. The Chinese are doing that right now in various regions when they reform. The Japanese are about to start it. The EC has always done that. If we can't take on small business and labor laws nationwide in Greece because there's too much else going on, get, make a virtue of it, get permission for this island, this town, this small region, That'll be a scale in which you can tailor it. It'll be a demonstration. It'll inherently be limited, but do it in that way. Eighth, when we're looking for examples, we've already seen the example of Israel in many ways, I think, and in fact, the presentation, I think, made it much more clear, and we had the Technion discussion earlier, much more clear the parallels than I think even I realized. But I also would encourage you to look at Ireland. Ireland was a country that was horribly poor, had a huge diaspora, huge problems, very historical dependencies, very agricultural, and it became the Celtic Tiger. Now, this isn't a raw, raw story. This is they did some very practical things. But part of the point was they did that in a European context without a huge devaluation of the Irish punt. And so I think to the degree there's maybe a research expertise or do you want to reach out to a few people who are not in this room, although besides anthropologists, it's hard to see who they are, um, you, you, you might want to reach out to some Irish. Um, I think I'm up to eighth or ninth now. Ninth. Cool. People are taking notes. This is very gratifying. That was just a test. Um, ninth. Something which, was, which is true in the Irish experience, not in the Israeli experience, but which I think would also be true in Greece. Your over-educated young people, let them go. Let them migrate. Particularly since you're in the EU and they have right of free movement, they will come back. They didn't used to come back in Greece because it was a political problem. But people who migrate for solely economic reasons generally return. We've seen this in Ireland. We've seen this in China. We've seen this in Australia. We've seen this in many places. Meanwhile, the flip side, as many people referred to, of having underemployed, angry, overeducated young people who don't have their opportunities is very poisonous to the environment. So you have the virtue of still being in the EU. Use it. Let the overeducated young people go be bargain doctors and architects and lawyers in Germany and France or wherever. 
and focus your efforts at home on the ones who do not have the transportable qualifications. And then those people will come back, assuming Greece recovers as it will. Um, 10. Agriculture. I know nothing about agriculture. I know a little bit about business and competitiveness. I am very impressed by the, the work that the foundation is doing. I think, however, there is a global trend towards large-scale, capital-intensive rather than labor-intensive agriculture. So what you may want to think about and what you may want to bet on is the place where agriculture turns into retail or wholesale distribution. You want to be looking at the opportunities where it's marketing of Greek products, it's distribution of Greek products, it's packaging, it's these sorts of things, agriculture itself per se. And I realize that the presentations covered this as well. But I just looking globally and looking at various reform efforts that have gone on, looking directly at back to the farm agriculture is going to be running counter to global trends, global technology. Tourism, 11. Um, there's very little I can add. I think this was an outstanding panel. And the work that the foundation is doing to create the cultural center in Athens and the work that the current Greek government is doing, as the minister set out, is outstanding. This is the place where I'm not an economist. I'm just trying to help you. You are tiny. Do not hesitate to put a huge bet on agriculture. And we have the, I mean, on tourism. We have the gentleman talking about it being difficult and all. But Richard Freeman is right. The, you, you just need a very small percentage of the Chinese, Japanese, Malaysian market, and you're there. Spain can't do it. Spain's too big. Greece really can. And there are economies in the Caribbean, in Southeast Asia, that are, that are um, small and are primarily tourism. It's not, a re it's not necessarily a way to go backwards. As you said, there's room for high-end tourism. All I'm saying is I'm endorsing that you can double down on this commitment. I think it is a reasonable way to go. 12, final point. One of the things which is difficult whenever anybody's trying to do something new is that inherently there are going to be some failures. For the Niarchos Foundation, for the partners in this room, there is a maturity of view that you can accept that if you say help small business, two out of every four, three out of every four small businesses will not thrive. But there is the physical cash limitation that there's only so much you can do. And this is why we talk local pilot projects. But I want to emphasize this to me is where the private sector, the philanthropic sector, the NGO have to step in because government is totally incapable of dealing with failure. So you look at the, they may cause failure, but they're incapable of dealing with it. So you look at the Obama administration and they had that crazy thing with Solera, Solinka, whatever it was, the, the, the solar energy company. Thank you. And it was just a mess up. And they were going ahead and they were supposed to be doing a set of new companies and investments in green energy. But because the first one went wrong, the whole process gets tainted and the whole thing gets shelved. And if you're an elected official, that is not a US thing, that's a universal thing. So even though you're constrained in resources, you have to accept that part of doing this is going to be a high failure rate. If you're dealing with youth, if you're dealing with small business, think of it as a portfolio. You want a good return on the portfolio. You don't need a good return on each individual investment. That's hard, but it's easier for the private sector and the wise philanthropic sector than for the public sector. Those would be my 12 points from what was an outstanding, rich, engaged conference. I don't presume to speak for the foundation, but I know, I believe, and I hope that we're all going to be continuing to work together on this. And, you know, if God willing, a year, two years from now, yes, the big things happen over a decade or 30 years, but we can have a few thousand more youth in Greece back in employment, and that as a model for others, I think we will have served people very well. Thank you all very much.
Thank you. We're not done yet. Hold on a second. Thank you, Adam. On behalf of all of us at the Foundation, we want to thank all of you for joining us during the past two days. I think it has been a great conference. I think uh, we have learned a lot, and I think that we have a lot of work to do ahead of us, all of us. A couple of things um, that I wanted to mention so that I don't forget. Um, one is that the conference, as I said, has been videotaped. We will start posting material on our, the Foundation's website starting next week. Um, we already started posting images and, and other things and other material. And also I wanted to let everyone know that the Foundation is organizing an annual conference on philanthropy for the last three years, for the past three years in Athens. This, is, this will be the third one actually. It will take place on June 26th and 27th in Athens. It has three main subject matters. The first day is again the same as the conference, dealing with youth unemployment. The second one has two subject matters, philanthropy and ethics, and the role of cultural institutions as engines of financial and civil growth. So we would like to invite all of you to join us in Athens, and we will get information about all the details of the conference in the next few weeks. Thank you very much. Enjoy New York. Have a safe trip back home to all of you who are traveling. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.